I was browsing the Googles and I came across this stuff here. There we go. I just wanted to see what's going on in Google and you notice how Google's got this little box that appears here. And we're going to read some of these things off and see what Google has to say. So, is Python losing popularity? We click through, all right? So it goes, the main disadvantages of Python is it are its slowness, its weakness in mobile application development, and its, and its less popularity in the enterprise development sector. Additionally, with the advent of AI and ML, nowadays enterprises are swiftly moving towards AI ML-based web application to better serve their customers. So my answer is it's gaining in popularity. It's the probably, it's either number one, number two, most popular language in the world today. Is Python still relevant in 2020? These are not my questions. These are Google. We'll see what Google says. Now major programming languages such, such as Python, Java, C Sharp, Node, well, Node is not a language, JS, uh, that's a language, support it. Due to the rapid expansion of the ecosystem, this makes it one of the most unique technologies to continue to be relevant for the foreseeable future. So that's pretty accurate there. What's well, this top seven programming languages and frameworks in 2020? Will there be a Python 4? At the current rate, the language, excuse me, at the current rate, rate, rate of language features releases roughly once every 18 months. That means we would likely see Python 4 for, for some time in 2023 rather than Python 3.10. So apparently with Python 4, it's not a huge upgrade. When you went from 2 to 3, it was a, you, your code could break, did break in certain circumstances. But from three to four, it's just going to be incremental. It's kind of like, it could be kind of like HTML5. Like they haven't released a new version of HTML5. There's no HTML6 on the horizon. Uh, and HTML5, I think it became, it took over about 2012. It was out before that, I believe, but it pretty much took over then. Um, there's not going to be an HTML6. They're just beefing up HTML5. So, all right, let's go back here. Uh, Will Python 2 ever end? See, Python 2 is, uh, was deprecated a long time ago. Python 2 is no longer supported by the Python Software Foundation. Here's what you can do if you're stuck in Python 2 in what is fast becoming a Python 3 world. As of January 1st, 2020, who that's last year, the 2x branch of Python programming language is no longer supported by its creators, the Python Software Foundation. Yeah, so... You shouldn't be doing Python 2, although if, if you were to learn uh, from an ancient Python 2 course, uh, for you to move into Python 3 would be like, like this. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Uh, yeah. What's going on? Here, another one. This weird Google, right? Google's questions here, right? Is Python a dying language? No. Originally, it's Python. Is Python Excuse me. Is Python a dying language? No, it is not dying. It's not even close to dying. Is Python enough to get a job? Python might be enough to get a job, but most jobs require a set of skills. True. For example, you might get a job to write Python code that connects to a MySQL database. To build a web application, you need to know JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you want to get into machine learning, you will need to know about mathematical modeling. So yeah, so Python, you could do standalone Python jobs. Like a, a friend of mine, he was working for an animation house and they had all these render farms, basically a bunch of server computers that are just processing video. And they controlled everything via Python scripts. So he had full-time Python programmers working for him when he could find them, because they were hard to find. Um, they're paid very well. And they would just write Python scripts. They, wouldn't, they weren't writing Python applications per se, but they were just writing Python code to manage be a server farm. So you see that as well where Python is used in a lot of back-end processes, not necessarily app building. All right, let's jump back in. See what else they got. Uh, is Python the future? Over the span of 25 years, Python has managed to reach the level that is high above other others, making it the fastest growing language. When was this written? April 2013. April 13, 2020, excuse me. Right here. Boop. Not only this, but it also has a promising future along with the additional other technology. There's no doubt that it has become quite favorite in the software industry. So Python is 25 years old, and it's, uh, it's even number one, number two. Uh, 
What will replace Python? F featured. Python is now one of the most popular programming languages among developers and could soon overtake C++. It did. This is a 2018 article, so it, sh it sh surely did. Uh, but a much younger language, Julia, a possible alternative Python, which never went anywhere, which did not go anywhere as far as I know, is catching on quickly, but it didn't actually catch on. All right, next, is Java really dying? Again, this is Google. I'm not picking these questions. Google is. You're right. There's no evidence that Java is dying. Another ancient technology and language that is still dominant. But no language is best at everything. Go is widely recognized as a good back-end language for servers. It's simple and powerful, but its ecosystem is limited. This is 2018 again. Java is still right up there. It's not number one, but it's, it's, even, it's in the top three most popular languages at all times. How are we doing here? Let's go. Uh, can Python replace Java? Python continues its rise on the list of popular programming languages in the world, according to the Taiobi. Excuse me. According to Taiobi analysts, with this rate, Python can overtake C and Java and become the most popular language. This is uh, last year, or a year, two years almost, a year and a half ago. It took overtook them as far as I understand. What is Python not good for? Not suitable for mobile and game development. Although I've heard that they, I think Sim City was done with Python, but I'm not sure about that. Python is mostly used in desktop and web server development. It is not considered ideal for mobile app development and game development due to the consumption of more memory and a slow processing speed while compared to other programming languages. Yeah, I would generally agree, but I'm sure there are exceptions. It's uh, is Python 3.9 released? Python 3.9 was released October 5th. There you go. So if we go there, let's see what we got here. Uh, we're at 3.91 February last, no, oh, date February this year. So point one is coming out in, uh, well, came out. Date, enter. Wow, it just came out today. What a fluke. There you go. Timely uh, articles. This article explains the new features of Python 3.9 compared to 3.8. 3.9 was released on October 5th, 2020. So this is 9.1. Um, so let's see. Summary, summary of release highlights. Uh, union operator added to DICT. That's D-I-C-T. Uh, type hinting <laughs> generics in standard collections. Relaxed grammar restrictions and decorator. Okay. So some uh, stuff on the periphery, just looking over quickly. All right, we'll get back to our main piece, but uh, yeah, well, there you go, 3.91 is released. By the way, if you're on a 3X branch, three, if you're, you know, if you find a course is 3.1, 3.2, 3.7, 3.6, 3.8, you're, you're fine, right? Um, when you get the subversions like that, the points, the differences are not very big for most people, okay? Uh, and, and for most language, for most aspects of the language. Uh, what is just the best version of Python? For sake of compatibility with third-party modules, it's always safest to choose a Python version that is a one major point version behind the current one. At the time of writing Python 3.8, one is the most current version. The best safe bet then is to use the latest update 3.7. There you go, that's March uh, 2020, it's not too long ago. Uh, okay, let's go on. These are getting boring. Um, oh, here's a good question. Python Is Python 3 backward compatible with Python 2? Python 3 implements a lot of very useful features and breaks backward compatibility. It does it on purpose so the great features can be implemented even despite the fact that Python 2... Uh, so basically, Python 3 is not backward compatible, although there are uh, programs that you can run your Python through code f through to make it Python 3. It's not perfect, but it, it does work to a certain extent. Uh, what's going on? Is Python better than SQL? It's kind of weird because they're two different language categories. SQL is designed for databases. Python is a general purpose programming language, so that's kind of a weird question. Is Python better than Ruby? We all know the answer to that. Oh, come on. Can I get a job with just Python? We saw that before. Can I learn Python in a month? Apparently, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can tell you from my course, many people learn Python within a month or sooner. 
Uh, first and foremost, requirement to learn Python within a month or not is knowledge of coding and a little bit proper efficiency in other languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java. If you have a workable knowledge of any of these languages, you can learn Python a month. Well, you can learn Python in a month if you have a very good course. Shameless self-promotion there. Can I get a job with Python certification? Becoming a Python developer is the most direct job out there for someone who knows Python programming language. That's a weird sentence. A Python developer can be expected to build websites, optimize data algorithms. No, not really. I know it depends on the type of job. Why Python is not future? It is the future. What are the disadvantages of Python? We know it's very slow. Uh, why is Python slow? Python is slower than C because it is an interpreted, lang interpreted language. This is also true. Uh, this amplifies a number of actual CPU, CPU instructions required in order to perform a given statement. The difference is that Python code can be interpreted instead of directly by the CPU. Will be, excuse me, the difference is that Python code will be interpreted instead of directly by the CPU. So what does that all mean? Because Python takes care of a lot of stuff for you automatically, well, let me just zoom in on Seth. Because Python takes care of most stuff for you automatically, um, you do not have to, as a programmer, manage all these things that you would have to if you were writing the code in, in uh, C++ or something, uh, or C. Um, so what happens is the code's a little less efficient because Python, when you write a little bit of Python code, like, I don't know, you create a variable, you run a function, it's doing all kinds of extra stuff that uh, behind the scenes, a lot of checks and so on, I guess. And so just a lot more code is, is running in the end. Whereas if you write very clean C code or C++ code, you got less code running, um, less things are happening, if you will. This is a very, very basic explanation. Uh, so that's why it just runs faster. All right, let's go on. All right, uh, okay, we did that one. Is C++ a dying language? No. Why is popular C, why is Python so popular? First and foremost, reason why Python is much popular, because it is highly productive as compared to other programming languages like C++ and Java. That means you'd have to write a lot less Python code to get something to work. It runs slower, but you, it doesn't take, uh, it, it's much shorter to write. Python is also very famous for its simple programming syntax, code readability, and English-like commands that make coding in Python a lot easier and efficient. Yeah, so that's, I uh, can't argue with that. Uh, which is better, Python or Julia? I don't know. Um, I, okay, we'll see, we'll see what they have to say. Julia is faster than Python because it is designed to quickly implement the math concepts like linear algebra and matrix representations. For codes that are equally big and complex written in both languages, Julia takes lesser time at speeds uh, of the same order of magnitude of C and Fortran. Oh, that's pretty fast. Um, yeah, Julia is a very specialized language though. So, you know, uh, what else is there? All right, so uh, any more? We'll see what else. Py can Kotlin replace Python? In some fields, Kotlin has already surpassed Python. Still, there, in, there is one field where Kotlin won't compare for now. It is in, 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 interoperability. Uh, I, I messed that one up. Kotlin has a superb platform of interoperability, Java, JVM, JS browser, but it's not quite easy to call C++ code. All right. Oh yeah, that's enough. It was interesting to see what um, uh, what the uh, Google had to say about Python here. So that's kind of cool. I thought it would be something to look at.